in this video i will show you the operation of dtl nand gate dtl nand gate is the basic building block of dtl logic circuits this is the circuit structure of dtl nand gate here i will denote this diode with diode d1 this with diode d2 this with diode d3 and this with diode d4 this resistor with resistance r1 this resistor with resistance r2 and this transistor with q you will see i will apply the input logic at this terminal and this terminal that means inside of the diode d1 and at the inside of the diode d2 let's say input logics are v1 and v2 and I am taking the output from this terminal to ground terminal which will be appeared at this voltmeter. Before discussing the logical inputs, let me talk about the on state of this transistor. See if I want to turn on the transistor Q, its base to emitter junction must be in forward bias and to keep the base to emitter junction of the transistor Q in forward bias or if I want to turn on the transistor Q, you will see the diode D3 and the diode D4 must be in on state. Let's say I denote this terminal as terminal X. Therefore, this X terminal to ground terminal voltage with Vx. If I want to turn on the transistor Q, the diode D3 and the diode D4 must be in on state or in forward bias or in conducting mode. Therefore, our Vx will be equal to the sum of built-in potential of diode D3 built-in potential of diode D4 and built-in potential of base to emitter junction of the transistor Q which will be nearly equal to if this diode D3 and the diode D4 and the transistor Q are made of silicon so you will see we will need a voltage around two point two volt to turn on the transistor Q that means the volt if the voltage difference between this terminal to this terminal is equal to or nearly equal to two point two volt I can say that the transistor Q will be in on state otherwise it will be in off state therefore its collector and emitter terminals will act like an open switch so i can disconnect the collector and emitter terminals from the given logic circuit now let me talk about logical inputs you will see i will connect a voltage source of 5 volt between this terminal to this ground terminal which usually with denote with vcc here vcc will be equal to 5 volt the positive terminal of this VCC will be connected at this terminal and the negative terminal is connected to this ground terminal okay at first I will talk about the input 0 0 inputs are at logic 0 that means this terminal will be at logic 0 and this terminal will be at logic 0 that means this terminal will be connected to ground terminal like this and this terminal will be connected to ground terminal like this therefore you will see the positive terminal of this 5 volt source will be connected with the P side of the diodes D1 and D2 as the negative terminal of the diodes are directly grounded therefore the negative terminal of this 5 volt will be connected to the inside of the diodes d2 and d1 so our diodes d1 and d2 both of them will be in forward bias so i can replace them with a voltage source of 0.7 volt or if i consider them as an ideal diode i can replace them with a short circuit see if i replace the diodes D1 and D2 with a short circuit. The voltage difference between this terminal to this ground terminal will be equal to 0 volt or the voltage difference between this terminal to ground terminal will be equal to 0 volt. Therefore, our voltage Vx will be equal to 0 volt. To turn on the transistor Q, we require a voltage approximately 2.2 volt. As the voltage is equal to zero so i can say that transistor q will be in off state that means it will not 
conducting so its collector and emitter terminals will act like open switch so i can disconnect the collector and emitter terminals therefore the collector current of this transistor will be equal to zero therefore i c r2 drop of across the r2 will be equal to zero that means this 5 volt which is applied between this terminal to ground terminal will be appeared in the voltmeter so our vo will be equal to 5 volt which indicates logic 1 now let me run the simulation to verify my circuit analysis see when this terminal is connected to ground and this terminal is connected to ground the diode d1 and d2 are forward bias so they are conducting therefore the voltage difference between this terminal will be around 0.7 volt which is not sufficient to turn on the transistor therefore our transistor q will be in off state therefore a small amount of leakage current is flowing at the collector terminal so our output voltage will be equal to 5 volt that means our logic circuit is at logic 1 for the logical inputs 0 0 now let me talk about the second case that means the inputs will be at 0 1 this v1 will be at logic 0 and this v2 will be at logic 1 that means this terminal will be connected to 5 volt source and this terminal will be connected to ground terminal when this terminal will be connected to 5 volt you will see the positive terminal of this 5 volt source will be connected with the inside of the diode and the negative terminal will be connected with the p side of the diode d2 so our diode d2 will be in reverse bias so it will not conduct any current through it now this terminal is grounded that means the positive terminal of this 5 volt will be connected with the p side of the diode d1 and the negative terminal which is connected to ground terminal will be connected to the n side which means that the di diode d1 is in forward bias so i can replace the diode d1 with a short circuit and d2 with an open circuit if i replace the diode d1 with a short circuit the voltage difference between this terminal to ground terminal or the voltage difference between this terminal to ground terminal which usually we denote with vx that will be equal to zero volt if i consider the diode as silicon diode that could be 0 0.7 volt which is not sufficient to drive the transistor q1 in on state so i can say our transistor q1 will be in off state or it will not conduct through the collector to emitter terminal as the transistor q is in off state that means its collector and emitter terminals act like open switch so i can disconnect the collector and emitter terminal from the given circuit therefore the collector current of the transistor q will be equal to zero so our ic r2 voltage drop will be equal to zero that means the 5 volt we are applying between this terminal to ground terminal will be appeared across this tra this terminal to ground terminal so our output voltage vo will be equal to 5 volt which indicates logic 1 now let me run the simulation here you will see the diode d1 is in on state or in conducting mode or in forward bias so it conducts the current so the voltage difference between this terminal to ground terminal is equal to 715 millivolt that means around 0.7 volt which is not sufficient to drive the transistor q is in on state because we need a voltage difference uh, approximately 2.2 volt between this terminal to this terminal so our transistor will be in off state so its collector current will be nearly equal to zero see 142 pico ampere which is very very small quantity the voltmeter is showing an output voltage of 5 volt which indicates logic 1 now consider the third case input will be 1 0 that means this v1 will be connected to 5 volt source and this v2 will be connected to ground terminal you will see the positive terminal of this 5 volt source will be connected at the inside of the diode d1 and the negative terminal will be connected to the p side so diode d1 will be in reverse bias so it will not conduct any current through this path and the positive terminal of this VCC or 5 volt is connected with the P side of the diode D2 and the negative terminal is connected with the N side. So diode D2 will be in forward bias. Therefore, I can replace it with a short circuit or a voltage source of 0.7 volt. If I replace the diode D1 with an open circuit because 
it is in reverse bias and diode D2 with a short circuit. You will see the voltage difference between this terminal to ground terminal which I have denoted with Vx will be equal to 0 volt or if I replace it with a voltage source of 0 0.7 volt it will be 0 0.7 volt which is not sufficient to drive the transistor Q in on state because we need at least 2.2 volt nearly to turn on the transistor so our transistor Q will be in off state therefore its collector and emitter terminals will act like open switch so i can disconnect the collector and emitter terminal of transistor q therefore our circuit will look like this the collector current of the transistor q will be equal to zero therefore collector load r2 icr2 drop will be equal to zero therefore this 5 volt will be appeared across this or this output to ground terminal so our output voltage VO will be equal to 5 volt which indicates logic 1 for 1 0 I will get logic 1 at the output now let me run the simulation see our diode D1 is in reverse bias therefore there is no current flow and the diode D2 is in forward bias so it is conducting the voltage difference between this terminal to ground terminal is equal to 715 millivolt approximately 0 0.7 volt which is not sufficient to drive the transistor Q in forward bias so it is in off state so a small amount of collector leakage 142 picoampere is flowing at the collector terminal and our output voltage will be equal to 5 volt okay now consider the last case that means both of the inputs will be at logic 1 1 1 our output should be 0 because this is a NAND gate that means this V1 will be connected to the 5 volt source and this V2 will be connected to the 5 volt source therefore you will see the positive terminals of the 5 volt source will be connected with the inside of the diodes D1 and D2 and the negative terminals will be connected with the diodes D1 and D2 and its P side therefore both of the diodes D1 and D2 will be in reverse bias so when both of them will be in reverse bias I can replace them with an, with an open circuit that means there will be no current flow throughout this path or this path if I replace the diodes D1 and D2 with an open circuit you will see the VCC the voltage VCC will be applied between this terminal to this terminal some portion of this VCC will be dropped across this R1 and the rest of them will be dropped across this terminal to this ground terminal so I can expect a voltage drop approximately 2.2 volt between this terminal to ground terminal so I can say our Vx will be approximately 2.2 volt so our transistor Q will will be in on state when the transistor Q will be in on state its collector and emitter terminals will act like a closed switch so I can short the collector and emitter terminals therefore you will see our output voltage will be equal to 0 volt because we have a total short circuit through this path now let me run the simulation to verify my circuit analysis see the diodes D1 and D2 are not conducting and the voltage difference between this terminal to ground terminal is equal to 2.16 volt see look here the voltage difference between this terminal to ground terminal is equal to 2.16 volt which I have told that the voltage difference between this terminal to this terminal will be approximately 2 volt so our transistor Q will be in on state so I will get a collector current saturation collector current will be equal to 2.25 milliampere therefore our output voltage will be nearly equal to 0 volt C 52.5 millivolt which indicates the logic 0 in the output circuit this 52.5 volt is the collector emitter saturation voltage okay that's it thank you